Good morning. I'm Jada Powell, and this is Josh Dodson. We're joining you today from Cognite's User Forum as part of the Digital Doers podcast that we are talking to industry executives today about what they do and how they use Cognite in their everyday business. So, Josh, welcome. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to have you this morning here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for Coke. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm the industry 4.0 leader for Coke. Uh, my job is to help the different industries um, that we represent think differently about how they transform, how they use data, and how they use all this crazy technology coming at us to create value. Excellent. Um, so Coke is a um, enterprise business. Um, I came from Coke Ag and Energy Solutions, which is a uh, fertilizer manufacturing company. Okay. Um, that was where the Cognite journey really got started within Coke. Um, so it's a it's been a fun ride. Awesome. Can you talk a little bit about that journey and what how it got started? Sure. Um, it's actually kind of funny. So we started, we, we got our first interactions with Cognite back in 2021, I believe. Um, and, you know, organizationally, we weren't ready for what they were doing. So if you talk mm -hmm. to the Cognite team a lot, they'll say we had to start creating products in order to show what data contextualization means because it was such a new concept to the industry. Wow. Right. And we were, we were kind of one of those first customers where we were like, we don't really understand it. Um, we weren't ready to buy into it as a, as a business. Um, and so over time we kind of did some internal maturing and got to the point where we said, all right, I think we're ready to go. We're ready to, 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 to buy into something like this. And so what we did initially was a little two month proof of concept mm -hmm. <clears throat> to say, okay, y'all are talking a big game. Can you actually deliver? Um, and we, we did this little two month proof of concept and then we took it out to the operations teams and said, is this something that you would value? And the overwhelming feedback was, yes, give it to us yesterday. Okay. Um, so that kicked off our journey into rolling Cognite out across the, we call it a fleet, our, our portfolio of assets. And um, it was great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I love that um, they were able to take a proof and prove it to you immediately from the work that they were able to do. And then you guys were like, we're all in. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. So I love that. So can you talk a little bit about where there's an example, and it can be um, from the case side, where AI has made a measurable difference? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the million dollar question. That is the million dollar <laughs> question. Um, so, so there's been a lot of pressure recently on AI and all the investment going into AI. Show me where it is on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. and, and my challenge back to anybody listening to this is it's really, really hard to find. Um, I believe that AI is going to kind of snowball over time, but it's not going to be use case by use case. It's going to be in a comprehensive AI strategy where you'll really start to see value. Um, I, I recognize the fact that use cases are needed in order to go execute, but if we're trying to measure AI's success based on one use case, it's just not going to pan out ever. But That's over time, point. the culmination of all these things put together is really where we'll start seeing true value. Um, so to answer your question, we took a bet that we are betting on the future, betting on a large value chunk. So we haven't put a whole lot of effort into trying to nail down each individual use case and how much value it's creating. That was a long way to answer your question, but that's that's how I think about it. So I guess the, the, the way to think about it is like you guys have a vision and you understand that, that the work that Cognite does is going to be a huge part of yes. how you move forward in the industry with all the things that are changing in AI. So yeah. oh, that's a great answer. I love it. It was vision aligned and yes. there's value. No, oh, that's great. So when you first started back in those early days, what surprised you the most about implementing AI into your everyday operations? Yeah, um, I think one of the one of the most surprising things is how quickly people start to pick it up once you spark a little bit of curiosity. Um, people, it, it, if you get them to try it just once, specifically LLMs, right? Mm -hmm. um, they start to tie the ideas together on their own relatively quickly. Um, now you have to pair that and make sure that it's it's got good data and it's 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 not hallucinating all the time. So there's some right. guide rails you have to put in place. But in general, once people recognize you're just talking to another person that happens to be super, super intelligent, right? right? People want answers. They'll, they'll go ask questions and things like that. And so I think that's been a big surprise for me because you hear how people are afraid of AI and oh, it's going to take my job. Well, mm -hmm. if you frame it right, you spark some curiosity, people start to latch on and they really start to use it. 
because they become more efficient, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're efficient in their job, they're getting more done, they're feeling like they're they're giving to the organization too. Mm-hmm. So all great things that AI they don't can have do. to do the things that they used to do right. that just made them mad, right? Especially yes, if it's things <laughs> that they don't like to do, right? Because we all have those tasks that we don't. Mm-hmm. How has working with Cognite changed the day-to-day of your team? There's a lot of um, menial tasks. I don't, I, not menial. There's a lot of tasks that we do now that are done differently than they used to be. Um, mm-hmm. So if you think about like putting together a job package as a maintenance team, right? It used to be, I'm going to go attach these files. I got to go find these files. I got to go download them, attach them to a work order. And then Mm -hmm. they're stuck. They're locked in that work order. Whereas now people are transitioning to, we're going to build it and we're going to collaborate on it together on a canvas, right? Mm -hmm. Or we'll go put together a monitoring dashboard on a canvas. And it's just the accessibility is, is really making people better at what they're doing. Um, and what this is also doing is it's sparking ideas of, you know, we talked about vision aligned and what we think the plan of the future looks like. It's starting to spark ideas in other people so that now they're wanting to go drive this. I think this helps get us to that um, future state too, right? Um, so an example of that is we're using our data on the front end of the work process to make our work orders, the data better. Mm-hmm. Right, so we've put AI agents on the front of the work process so that we're not having to train everybody on this is exactly what you need to know and put into the work order. They're basically talking with an agent and mm-hmm. saying, are you sure that's enough information based on what you're saying? This is what I think that this is what I think you mean. Right. And so it's making the data going into every other part of, part of our process um, better. Right. Which has long term implications as you start to um, see the snowball grow. Right. Yeah, that is incredible. I never thought about it that way. But right, if if AI is prompting them to make sure that they are giving everything that they need to, it's going to make all of your data cleaner, right? Absolutely. So talk a little bit about, I know I've heard this with other companies too. So (laughs) what did you have to do to the data before you started with Cognite, right? Mm -hmm. Because there has to be a certain level of you um, as a company, like Mm -hmm. making sure that you're giving it the best data that you can. Yeah, I mean, I I think one of the one of the accidental favors we did ourselves is before we even got introduced to Cognite, we kind of started on this journey of we are going to, we call it solve once, apply seven times for our seven plants, right? Mm. And so we started this journey of consolidating our different systems, our structured data systems, like our CMMS and our historian and whatnot. And so before we were even introduced to Cognite, we were all already sitting on this platform of relatively consistent data. That's good. Um, that helped us scale very quickly, um, which was great. You don't necessarily have to do that because we've acquired plants since we got started and they were very easy to port in as well. I say port, that's a terrible word for it, but (laughs) to bring into the, to bring into the system as well. Um, and I think we didn't spend a ton of time retroactively cleaning our data. We did as good as we could. And then we said, all right, here's the problem areas. Let's go fix those. And what happens, right, back to the curiosity and the people starting to, to, to understand the value, they're actively going back and changing things now where they're like, that should be connected and it's not. I can go fix that. Wow. Um, so if you're talking to someone in oil and gas who's hesitant about AI, what is one piece of advice that you'd give them based on the experience you've had with Cognite? I would say <laughs> just get started. <laughs> just, just try just it, go. right? I mean, it, it, it's it's – Something that we're all going to have to contend with at some point. It's going to change the way the world works. Right. Just just fundamentally. So the longer you wait to get started, the further behind you're going to be. Um, and once you start tinkering, once you generate some curiosity, it's, it's, it's not that bad. You'll start to have these ideas just like everybody else is having, right? And you will hopefully get excited as well. Um, and I'd also say, you know, back to the data question, that is one of the big hurdles that people are throwing up for themselves. It doesn't necessarily have to stop you. It might change the pace and the speed and the, the things that you can do initially, but over time you're going to figure out how to overcome those hurdles. Um, and then I guess the last piece is, we kind of talked about it earlier. I, I hate the word use case. We need to be thinking about this as a holistic strategy, right. not just a use case by use case, single project ROI basis. 
Um, and it's got to be incorporated into your entire strategy. Absolutely. Like you said, I think that your team having the curiosity is just building the bigger vision for the strategy too, right? It's not, you're not forcing buy-in. They're automatically engaging with it because they want it to be better mm -hmm. and it's going to keep getting better and better and better. So yep. as I was, I was, as I was thinking about my answers there, it's like from really, really small, just get started to have this whole massive strategy. I mean, <laughs> If you get started, your strategy can be developed over time. It doesn't have to be fully thought out before you get started. So I think that's what 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 hamstrings a lot of people too when they're thinking about this. They're like, "Oh, we have to do all this," and but like to your point, just get started, yep. and then it'll eventually. You will figure it out. Figure as you it go. out. You'll you'll learn and adjust and make pivots, and you will fail. That's okay. Yes, uh, fail fast. Yeah, fail fast. <laughs> so looking ahead to the next year with your business, uh, what is the most AI capability, what is the AI capability that you're most excited about that's mm. new and coming for you guys? <laughs> uh, that is a very loaded question <laughs> um, because partially because I've seen some things, but I also know that I haven't seen everything. Right. Um, so there are some things that I'm excited about, like causal AI. Um, Drish in his, in his keynote this morning was talking a little bit about finding causal factors. That is something that I think brings on the next evolution of AI is Right now, we're bringing knowledge together and we see how it's related, but we don't see how things are impacting other things yet. Um, and I think that's where AI is really going to start to unlock some massive value. Um, I'm not an expert in the field, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> oh, that's all very exciting news. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're here at the Cognite User Forum for the Digital Doers Podcast with Josh Dodson of Cook. Thank you for your time today. Yep, great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for listening to OGGN, the world's largest and most listened to podcast network for the oil and energy industry. If you like this show, leave us a review and then go to OGGN.com to learn about all our other shows. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter. This show has been a production of the Oil & Gas Global Network.